Hi everyone, I'm Simon from HomeSite and today we're going to be setting up a Sonoff Zigbee bridge with our Home Assistant. Let's go! So every time I've done a Zigbee based video I've always had the question of does this work with ZHA and to be honest I didn't know because I don't use it. I've always used Zigbee to MQTT with an IT CC2531 dongle which is plugged directly into my home assistant. But now I'm going to be able to answer those questions. I'm going to be able to do a comparison between the two but that will come in a later video. So in this video we're going to set up this Sonoff Zigbee bridge, we're going to flash it with TAS motor. I'm going to get it working to ZHA and I'm going to add a device and we're going to see how easy it is. Now why would you use this over a CC2531? I can really see the benefit because actually you don't have to have this next to your home assistant actual instance. You can have it because it's coming over the Wi-Fi and using serial over that Wi-Fi you could stick it anywhere you like. You can stick it in the middle of the house where you can pick up most of the devices. So I really hope this video is useful for you. I hope you give it a like down below and I hope you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future videos that I'm going to do. So let's get the bridge unboxed first of all. Fairly simple box, nice and bright orange. Not a lot to it really, a few bits of instructions, a couple of features on the side. We know we've got the right one because it says the ZB bridge on it. Now it looks a very similar size to the RF bridge which I've looked at before. So here we go, oh it's white opposed to the, the RF bridge which is black. I guess they've done that on purpose. So like with most of these things there's not a lot in there, a little QC pass which is always reassuring, a bit of a manual. Now the manual is going to tell you how to connect it up to the U-Link app, the EWE Link app, which of course it will work with out of the box. So if you are interested in using that, that's absolutely fine, go ahead. Now personally I like to add them into Home Assistant so I won't be needing the instructions nor the box. And here we go. Uh, I've just got an RF bridge here as well just to compare them side by side. They're identical apart from colour, looking at the pairing button, looking at the USB slot. Obviously you can see this one's got RF and this one's got Zigbee. Now that's referring to the light that's on the top of the unit. So I'm going to start taking this thing apart. I'm going to get these four screws out underneath the little rubber feet. So there we have it, out of the box, nice and simple. So here you can see we've got the ESP8266 chip down here and the Zigbee chip up at the top. So this is how we're going to connect it. Now I'm going to use this TTL to USB adapter and these are the ports. Now you'll notice that there is two ground connections. Now this is important, but onto the IO0, you need a ground as well, and that prevents it from booting into its normal boot routing. Now on my TTL adapter, I've soldered an extra ground connector. Now my normal jumper wires don't fit these holes, which is a bit annoying, but I've put some jumper wires that should fit down in the description below. So I'm gonna have to solder these on, and very quickly here, I realize that I can't simply do it like this, I need to have it in a proper clamp and not at arm's length how, with the way I'm recording this video. So if you're not too adept at soldering, you're going to want to buy some of those jumper wires. You can, there is holes there that you can poke the, the connectors through, but they're not the normal size ones. They're certainly not the same as the, the Sonoff RF bridge ones. So here you go. I've soldered all the connections on as per the details here. Now I'm just going to simply connect it up to my TTL adapter. And there, the TTL adapter has got the connections on the right here of this, this diagram here. And there's my ground pin here. And that's connected into this IO0. And that's just my little blast blue wire that's going to go on now. There we go. So we're now fully connected and now we're going to need some software. So we're going to browse to the, this URL and find the TAS motor, zbbridge.bin. Now this is a specific bin file for the ZB bridge, which is different from most of the TAS motor files. Most of them you can choose the profile, this one you can't. So I'm going to use Node MCU Flasher 
look in your serial port devices and have a look there first to see the new device to make sure you get the right one. So it's the new one that pops in in a second when we connect this up. So I'm gonna sort of loosely position this in the right place, hold it in one hand, press and hold the button on the device and, find, and make that final connection. Now I'm gonna refresh that list in my Node MCU flusher and it should be a new device and you can see that one has appeared down at the bottom. We're gonna choose that firmware file in a second. So here's our firmware file. We wanna make sure that this is on D out, 115, 200 is the board rate and I'm gonna erase the flash as well. Once we've got all that set up, hit flash node MCU. That should take a minute or so. There we go, so that's all done. So I've just included the picture of my device down here. And you can now see that, that light is flashing blue, which is great, which means that it should be producing its own SSID, which we can see here. Great, so as soon as I connect onto that Wi-Fi network that the TAS motor is pushing out, this Sonoff device is pushing out, we can come onto this interstitial page as soon as we connect to it and enter our details. Now notice this IP address at the bottom, 192.168.4.1, because we'll want that in a minute. I'm gonna change the host name to ZB Bridge and save. Now this should now kick you off of the TAS motor device, off the Sonoff device, and onto, hopefully back onto your own network. Now I'm doing this on a Mac, but it should make no difference whether you're doing a Mac or a Windows machine. So I can now connect to my router, or the thing that hands out the DHCP addresses. Now I'm gonna to go to Diagnostics, this is my Draytech router that I use, my DHCP table. Now I'm gonna, we're now gonna look for that device. Now it might be a bit of a needle in the haystack. So what I did whilst I was connected, I pinged the device, 192.168.4.1, that IP address of, that, of the Sonoff device. Now you can see that command here. So if you open up a command prompt or a terminal, type ping that IP address. Now that will send a simple message to that device and, it'll, and now you'll be able to run an ARP space minus A command. Now what that's going to do is it's using the address resolution protocol and it's going to show you the MAC address of the device that's associated with that IP address. You might want to check out my networking tutorial if this is all going over your head. However, you can see here that we start with A6CF12 and this is our MAC address of our device. So when I look in my DHCP table of my router, I should be looking for that. Now the crazy thing here is you can see the MAC address changed. So we started off with A6, however, this device is A4 now that it's joined the main network. I don't know why, but it does. And so this, I, but what that's now allowed me to do is find my IP address of my device, which is 192.168.100.33 in this instance. Now, you're gonna to want to put in a DHCP reservation to make sure that you always get the same address, otherwise you will get problems. If you don't know how to do that, you need to look up how to do that for your particular device. Here, I've just done it with my Draytech router, and I'm gonna set it to 192.168.100.86. Always worth doing a ping just to make sure. Now, I keep quite tight controls over my IP addresses on my network to make sure that I don't get any issues. I know that 86 is free, so I'm gonna use that one. Great, so that's me done on this one. So I can come back to my TAS motor device and if I, once I've rebooted it, I should be able to get to the new IP address. So in my case, .86. There we go. So that's done. And I can now browse through and make sure that it works correctly. So the next thing we're gonna do is download this file here. Now, of course, I will put in the description below links to these files. So once we've downloaded that, we can come back onto our Sonoff device and we do this firmware upgrade. Now, this is a bit simpler. It's an OTA, an over the air file upgrade. So we can simply choose the file, select the one that we've just downloaded, hit choose and start the upgrade. 
Now don't navigate off this page just yet. You need to wait for this transfer to finish. So that's done. We can now go back to our main menu and I'm gonna jump into the console to see what it's doing. So you can see it's reset. So that's good. This is what you're looking for. That is all done, which is great. So if you've got this far, you now need to take this command. Again, it'll be in the description. Put it in this white box and hit the enter button. And this will set it up. Note, we've got this port 8888, which is the port that we're gonna be using. We're gonna be listening on that port. So when our home assistant talks to this device, it's using that port. So you can see now we've had this TCP start 8888, and we're all done. So now it's time to get this configured into our, our ZHA with Home Assistant. So now we've got that all flashed and all set up. We're going to, I'm now back on my Windows machine and I'm going to connect to my Home Assistant. I'm going to come to my integrations and I'm going to add a new integration. Now this is, I'm just going to search for ZHA. There we go, Zigbee Home Automation and this is going to install it for me, nice and easy. Then I'm going to enter manually the serial port. All of these commands will be in the link in the description below as well. So the radio type. This one we're going to choose the EZSP. Now we need to type something in here, this serial device path. And here I'm going to type socket colon forward slash forward slash your IP address of your Sonoff Zigbee bridge colon the port and that port was 8888 and here's my example here and we're going to change this serial port serial speed to 115200. Now if you're familiar with serial ports then you'll find that, that is a, one of the standard board rates. That'll take a couple of seconds, but once it's done, we've got success. We can see that this is configured into Home Assistant. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? So let's have a look. I'm going to click on this device. I can see I've got my Zigbee coordinator, which is obviously this Zigbee bridge itself. So if I hit configure, I can come to devices. I'm going to hit add device, and it's now searching for Zigbee devices. Believe it or not, I have one right here. And here we go, device found. Interview complete. This is a, a bulb, just a simple bulb, an RGB. It's come up as U light, U, U light ZBCL101. You can specify what location it is within your house. And that's done. That was pretty quick. And hopefully, I should be able to turn this device off and on. I can, that's good. That's actually working here. Okay, that was pretty simple. So let's have a, just have a look around ZHA. I've come to my, all my entities. If I go back to my configure for this, I can set some groups up. I can see the Zigbee devices. Now I've obviously got the coordinator and one device at the moment. It seems a bit simpler than MQTT, Zigbee to MQTT, but, um, but what more do you need? It's listed my device. Okay. Doesn't seem to be a lot within here. I doubt you can do much in the way of standard automations or scripts. Okay, that looks like it then. You can drag that around. It doesn't show the links like Zigbee to MQTT. It shows the, the parent-child relationships and that sort of thing in the in the map for Zigbee to MQTT. Obviously, I've only put one device on here at the moment, so um, it's hard to gauge the performance but it uh, seems good so far. I'm just gonna change the name of this light. I'm just gonna call it RGB bulb for now. It's quite the long name for the entity ID, but that's okay for now. What if I can change it? Oh, I can, there we go. I can change the colors as well, so that looks like that's fully supported. So it's picked up the device and its capabilities. I can change the brightness, the color temp, the color. Seems pretty good, pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna add it into a Lovelace dashboard as well, make sure I've still got full control, which I'm sure I will. 
just going to add this simple light card. Choose my device, RGB bulb. There it is. And that'll do. Not going to change the icon or anything like that. Change the name. And save. So I should be able to now change the brightness. Cool. That seems to work quite nicely. Okay, so it seems to do everything I would expect. Now I need to really, I'm gonna have a good play with this against uh, the Zigbee to MQTT. I wonder if there's a bit more of a delay because we're now going over the Wi-Fi network for our Sonoff Zigbee bridge. However, rather than being connected in directly via a USB port. But first impressions look pretty good. It seems pretty straightforward to configure, um, pretty straightforward to set up. The flashing was a bit of a faff, but, but it's not too bad. So all done. I've got my Sonoff Zigbee bridge configured with Tasmota. I've got it working into Home Assistant via ZHA, and I've got an RGB bulb working. So whilst I haven't done any performance tests, I'm still interested to know what will happen with that and how it compares with Zigbee to MQTT and it's CC2531. So far, it looks really, really simple to, straight to set up once you've got the device flashed. Now, I haven't found anywhere that you can buy it pre-flashed, but um, perhaps that would be a good thing. Perhaps in the comments below, if you feel like that would be of value, maybe I could do it. Maybe I could set up a little uh, little web shop and you can buy them direct from me. Um, there's links for all of the stuff I've included in this video down in the description below. I hope you've really enjoyed it. I hope you've already liked it. I hope you've subscribed to my channel and I hope you'll join me on the next one. Thanks very much. I'm Simon from HomeSite.